My entire life, I have always been an extremely introspective person. I'm sure many of you introverts will relate to this, but I used to joke with my friends that the reason why I'm so introverted is because I spend all my social energy having conversations with myself. So by the time I get around to having conversations with real human beings, I've got nothing left in the tank. But I struggled a lot for many years growing up with a lack of true understanding. Unfortunately for my younger self, you just can't think yourself out of situations that you don't have an answer for. And for many of those struggles and experiences that I went through early on in my life, these questions have served and continue to serve as a solution. So here are five questions that I use that have had a dramatic impact on my life. But before I get into that, if you're sitting there right now wondering who the fuck is this wanker trying to tell me what to do on the internet, hi. My name's Tom. I'm a content creator and creative entrepreneur on a mission to help the person that I was become the person that I am today. So if you're interested in that, if you're interested in following along on the journey, please hit subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the rest of what I have to say today. Question number one, how would this look if it were easy? I got this one from Tim Ferriss, but I can't for the life of me remember if it was in the four hour work week, which is a fantastic book or a podcast episode, but I guess that detail is kind of unimportant. It served me, at least, as a constant reminder of just how much I overcomplicate my life. And for me, that was most prevalent in my perfectionism. Every output, every situation I found myself in, everything I did was a constant question of what more can I do? Until I broke, completely. From mid-2021, for over a year, I made nothing. And that doesn't even include the fact that I made barely anything in the months and years leading up to mid-2021. Creatively, I was completely fucked. And it wasn't until I read this question that I completely reevaluated my approach. For the first time in my adult life, rather than asking how can I do more, I asked how can I do less? How would letting go of my need for perfection ironically result in better creative work? And from that point, my entire life changed in a way that I could honestly dedicate an entire video to. But for the same sake of time, I'm going to leave that for today. Question number two, if I keep these same habits daily for the next five years, will my life be better or worse? Our habits, the things that we do daily without even thinking about it, lay the foundation for the rest of our lives. They create the momentum that drives our direction, whether that be positive or negative. And for a lot of us, those actions and habits are completely unconscious. And for me, this question serves as a way to bring consciousness back to those unconscious habits. In a real simple sense, it's just, is this action that I'm about to do a check in the box of the person I want to become, i.e. would the best version of me do this thing or is it a check in the box of the person that I'm trying to avoid? It just makes me think twice before pouring myself a whiskey on a Tuesday night or gets me out the door for a run when I cannot think of anything I want to do less. Question number three, how is the worst thing that's ever happened to me the best thing that's ever happened to me? I got this one from Tom Billiou from his podcast, Impact Theory, and I fucking love this question because it takes you and puts you back in the driver's seat when life wants to strap you in and take you for a ride. I'm gonna get a little personal here, so fair warning, but I grew up pretty affluent. Nothing crazy and ludicrous, but we were really good. My dad was first generation successful and he'd done exceptionally well for himself. But through one bad business partnership, my old man went bankrupt when I was 16 and my family lost our home and basically all the things that we had. Now I've got four siblings and obviously as a big family, that was really hard on my parents and us as kids. To this day, I honestly cannot believe my parents' strength to not only stick with one another through that whole situation, but to continue supporting us as kids as best they could. They're fucking badasses, and I hope that I can be even half the people that they are. Now, at the time, me and my siblings didn't really comprehend the situation, because up until that point, we had never really thought about money, because we didn't have to. And suddenly, the four of us found ourselves thrust into a world where money was a very real and serious problem every single day. But we got through it. So back to the question. How is that the best thing that's ever happened to me? With that question and through an enormous amount of introspection, years and years later, I can now confidently say that that situation and my parents and my family's struggle with bankruptcy is the best thing that's ever happened to me because it's given me empathy that I don't think I would have had otherwise. Empathy for my parents' struggles and empathy for other families who go through situations where money is a serious problem. And it also gave me the work ethic that's made me who I am today. Now to preface, that realization took me an enormous amount of time and a lot of therapy to get to. So I'm by no means trying to undermine the trauma that you may have been through in your own life. I just hope that this serves as a helping hand in transforming that situation, whatever it may have been for you, into something that serves you rather than holds you back because there's value in the struggle. You can either find a way to harness it or let it control you. The situation and its impact on you remain the same 
but your response and the value you draw from it is ultimately up to you. Question number four. I like to ask myself, if this isn't nice, I don't know what is. This one really helps me to get out of that unconscious state that so many of us go through our lives in. Even right now, recording this video, I get to sit here, make a video for the internet, and that's what I get to call my job. And before I did this, I went on a run outside in the sunshine with a friend. If that's not the very definition of nice, I don't know what the fuck is. So use this question daily to take stock of the beautiful moments that you find yourself in. Whether that be the air, you get to breathe, the sun you get to feel, the activities that you get to enjoy, the people that you love spending time with, or even the progress that you've made in your own life. Because be honest with me for a second, when was the last time you truly acknowledged that where you are right now is exactly where you used to dream of being? I used to dream of getting to the point where I could sustain myself financially whilst making content on the internet. And now I get to do that to a level that I couldn't even comprehend when I started out. So wherever you find yourself right now whilst you're watching this, I want you to pause this video, look up from your screen and ask, if this isn't nice, I don't know what is. And question number five is, what am I willing to suck at whilst I pursue my higher goals? As an ambitious person, and as I'm sure many of you can relate to, my biggest struggle is not asking the question of what do I want to do, but asking the question of how can I do it all? If I had my life my way and had infinite time to do everything that I want to do, I'd be a professional iron distance triathlete, I'd be a full-time YouTuber, I'd be posting content daily on every single social media platform. Platform, I'd have written a few books, I'd be fluent in four languages, and I'd have traveled to every single continent on the planet. But unfortunately for the ambitious, focus is your best friend and your worst enemy. Because the realization that I had that has most changed my life is that focus is not the decision to do more, it's the decision to do less. It made me realize for the first time that if I want to achieve my goals, I have to be willing to sacrifice a few of them at least temporarily. For me, over the last 12 months, it was my fitness. Now, don't get me wrong, I still ran 60 to 70 kilometers a week throughout this entire last 12 months. So by all means, you can still be fit whilst pursuing your business goals. And if anyone tells you otherwise, they're just fucking lazy. But this time 12 months ago, before I shifted my focus to business, I just finished a 935 Ironman. And in the lead up to that, I was training 25 plus hours a week. I realized in that moment that there was no way humanly possible that I was gonna be able to maintain that level of focus on my fitness and focus on my business. So I stopped and for the last 12 months, I dropped my training right back. And as a direct result of all that time and focus that I have back, my business has grown bigger than I ever could have imagined. So rather than listening to all the productivity gurus who constantly try to tell you that you can squeeze more into a 24 hour period, instead ask, what am I willing to suck at at least temporarily whilst I pursue my higher goals? I hope this video has been valuable and I'll see you guys next time.